Tesla's going to make the Cybertruck with some revolutionary manufacturing processes, but does not limit the innovation to its casted body. The new EV truck will become the first vehicle from Tesla to come equipped with the hardware 4.0 computer. This will be the successor to the present custom hardware 3.0 computer. This is the one currently being delivered in the Tesla vehicles today. Elon Musk discussed this in great detail at the AI Day, which was aimed at going over the company's different artificial intelligence-related initiatives. Having been asked by one of the attendees of the event, Mr. Musk commented that the hardware 4.0 of full self-driving computer 2.0 will get introduced in the company's vehicles very soon. Even though the presently run hardware 3.0 is very impressive in terms of both safety and performance, the successor will be a substantial step up from it. Elon stated that Tesla Cybertruck would be having the hardware 4.0 when it gets introduced in a year or so. He also added that the hardware 3.0 allows Tesla's self-driving systems to drive at a rate of 300% better than human beings. When the hardware 4.0 hits the market, it will take this number up to over 1000%. Elon Musk said that he is confident that the FSD Computer 1 or hardware 3.0 is made to perform full self-driving much more proficiently compared to humans. This is probably 200-300% to better than any human driver. This will only be topped when the hardware 4.0 or FSD Computer 2 comes to the scene. Mr. Musk commented that it would be roughly four times as capable as hardware 3.0, hence taking the safety up to 1000%. He also added, that people with different types of driving skills and behaviors are allowed to drive daily. They do not have to be the best drivers to be let to drive. The comment that hardware 4.0 will be released in 2022 led to many speculations that the Cybertruck may also get delayed the same year. This may not be true, and the delay may not happen. Tesla will most likely decide to start producing the Cybertruck with the existing hardware 3.0 computer technology, Later, when the hardware 4.0 has been developed and properly tested, it will upgrade the vehicles to the new version. This isn't something new and has already been done back when Tesla made the transition from hardware 2.5 to hardware 3.0. For those customers who have already purchased a Cybertruck equipped with the FSD and hardware 3.0, they are most likely get a retrofit rollout program. It will be pretty similar to the case where Tesla handled Model 3 owners in the past. They had also purchased the FSD suite and got vehicles fitted with the hardware 2.5. They were later offered the hardware 3.0. It was back in 2016 that Tesla rounded up a team of chip architects and put the famous chip designer Jim Keller as its leader. The goal given to the team was to make a highly powerful self-driving chip that would also be very efficient. In the previous year, Tesla achieved it and put it to work in the hardware 3.0 of the FSD computer. This had an acclaimed 21-factor improvement in the frame-per-second processing, as compared to the previous generation of Tesla Autopilot. This newer technology was powered by hardware from NVIDIA and only had a slightly higher power consumption as the downside. The hardware 3.0 chip was manufactured by Samsung, but it seems as if Tesla wants something even better for hardware 4.0. This time, a 7 nanometer process will be used, and it will be done by the Taiwanese semiconductor company called TSMC. TSMC can be considered the market leader in semiconductor chips. This leap in engineering can be considered as the main reason why now the chips will be performing almost four times better than before. The actual performance of the chip will only be witnessed once it hits the market, almost one or two years from now. It will be first seen in the 2021 model year Teslas. Tesla supercharger network and destination chargers have claimed the first spot in the JD Power US Electric Vehicle Experience public charging study. A score of 689 points out of 1000 was achieved by Tesla's destination chargers and it ranked highest among all level 2 point operators. On the other hand, the Tesla supercharger network got the highest position in all DC chargers and scored 733 out of 1,000 points. Two main things were also highlighted in the study, where there is room for improvement relevant to EV charging stations. 
The first one is the availability of public charging stations. There are mixed feelings among the owners. This is due to many areas still being out of reach of public charging stations, which has significantly lowered the owner's satisfaction. The second issue is that there are not enough chargers at the stations. Many EV owners have cited this particular issue, which has led them to long waits at charging stations, which has also dropped the owner's satisfaction levels by a great degree. This senior director of Global Automotive at JD Power, Brand Gruber, said that public charging infrastructure plays a pivotal role in the overall adoption of electric vehicles. It is very unfortunate to see that the availability of public charging stands out to be the most dissatisfying attribute of EV ownership. EV customers are only happy in areas that provide the best-case scenarios to them. It means that public charging must be free, there must not be any waiting for a very long time, and there must be some other things to do at the station that can keep the customers busy. Once again, this only tends to be the best-case scenario. There is a huge gap to be filled and the EV industry has to make substantial investments in setting up public charging stations that have all the commodities to ensure satisfaction and convenience for their clients. This will be a great way to get EV skeptics to join the electrification of the vehicles. Just some time before the study got released, it was announced by Tesla that it had been working on making the supercharger network open to all other non-Tesla electric vehicles. This would be a great thing for the EV community, as over 25,000 chargers would then become available for non-Tesla owners all over the world. Tesla's made itself very aware of the importance and impact of charging stations on the overall EV community and potential customers as well. It has a vast and strong charging network that could help EV owners by supporting them during their ownership experience. This would in turn increase their utility and lead to growth in the market. The CEO of Recurrent, Scott Case, has said that this is the first time ever that a thing not attached to an EV, but relevant to it, is impacting its market value to such a high extent. He was hinting at the value added to EVs by charging stations, a great reason why Tesla increases or retains the market value of its course is that the company always works on growing its charging station network, both in numbers and also in the facilitative infrastructure. Adding more charging stations to the mix results in a boosted ownership experience, which inflates the usability and practicality of EVs. This then leads to raising their value. In case Tesla goes through with its decision to open its supercharger network to all EV owners, it will result in all EVs and PHEVs in getting access to the biggest network in the world. It will help all present owners and future owners. This will also lead to the appreciation of the values of all such vehicles. Tesla's not the only company that's always in the works to expand its charging infrastructure. Many third-party companies are in the market for charging station networks. EVgo and Electrify America are among some of the names that you will hear. These will allow all EV users to make use of their chargers. It's not yet known whether the Tesla owners will get to use these third-party chargers or will they have to stick to using the Tesla network only. Make sure to check out one of the videos shown on your screen right now. We post videos daily. So feel free to subscribe and stay up to date on all most recent news and updates.